is the central symbol of Christianity, the cross. To the left lies redemption, layer upon layer, of the Christian great and good, the devout from down the ages, from saints and kings, to a mere artist down on the lowest level, Jota himself, wearing a rather jaunty hat. And in the foreground we see the man responsible for this whole chapel, Enrico Scrivani, giving his chapel to the Virgin Mary. But why? Well, his father was a moneylender, a vice in the eyes of the church, and Enrico himself was probably a usurer too. So this building was perhaps an act of atonement for the sins of his family. But things get really interesting, really dramatic, and really traumatic to the right of the cross. Because here is hell, where four tongues of flames suck nude figures down into hell. This is the descent into depravity, where figures are pulled apart, they're falling, they're being raped, they're being violated by demons. And here, with this massive image of Satan, they're being devoured and excreted in a vicious cycle. The chapel still seems visually dazzling. In the 14th century, it must have seemed staggering. There were critics, of course, monks from a neighboring monastery who claimed that it was too ornate a display of wealth, particularly for a private commission. But this was perhaps just a fit of jealousy, because by all other accounts, people flocked to see it in their droves, a religious spectacle created by the new wunderkind of Italian art. After the success of the Scriveni Chapel, Giotto was given a prestigious commission closer to home, in Florence, in the Church of the Onisanti or All Saints, where he produced this large altarpiece, showing the Blessed Virgin Mary and Christ, surrounded by saints, with an architectural construction that amplifies that sense of perspective. Above where the altar would have been, Giotto paints two steps, mottled and marbled, in blues and greens and reds. And that draws us up to the throne of the Virgin Mary herself. It amplifies that sense of stepping into the picture in our minds. And then we approach the heavenly couple, the central image of the painting itself. And there is Christ giving a blessing, a benediction to all who look at the work. But we're also struck by how wonderfully real, certainly by comparison with previous art, this image seems. The Virgin herself, with that translucent veil, we can see the outline, slightly sensually, of her breast. But this is the image of a fecund, nourishing mother. But this altarpiece is now in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, next door to the work of Giotto's great teacher, Cimabue. And you can compare a work that Cimabue did 25 years before, and you realize just how much more intimate Giotto's work is, how more worldly, how more real and tangible. Both pictures have an audience of figures surrounding the holy pair. Cimabue stacks them up one on top of the other. Giotto, however, creates more solid sculptural beings, arranged to recede slightly, giving a sense of perspective. At the same time, there's a real weight and monumentality to both Mary and Jesus. And so, what Giotto manages to combine very deftly is an image of gravity and of grace. During the next 20 years, Giotto travelled widely for work.